Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to a very cold and wintry day here from Melbourne. And in the spirit of this, we're going to be making tropical drinks. So welcome to our tropical Sunday session. So I thought I'd pick the best day so far. It's nine degrees and dreary, but because we're probably not going to be able to go on our holidays to the Caribbean, to the Bahamas, to the Maldives, I'm going to be bringing that to you today. So I've dressed up for the occasion. I've got my nice Hawaiian shirt on and we're going to be making some long drinks, some fun drinks. I asked my bartender friends what really cool sort of tiki style drinks. So we've got, we've got a classic. We're going to start with the Singapore Sling. We're going to have a tribute to all my friends and uh, we're going to be using some really good products in a Long Island iced tea. And then we're going to be making a jungle bird at the end using our dams and gin, something we really haven't used today. Um, good to see so many people in Tabredi. Good to see Tasmanian pro produce market. Good to see Jackie. Good to see Jared. Good to see Katie. Hope you're well. Uh, good to see Sandra. Good to see everyone. Yeah. My shirt's pretty nice and fun today, so we're going to keep it really quite chill. Everyone's at home. Lockdown is starting to ease, but in Victoria, we're still um, still quite strict. But in Tassie, our cellar door will be opening next weekend, so that is something. So you can do bottle sales. We're not doing tours just yet, but we can do bottle sales from the cellar door. So let's get into our first drink. Today, we're going to be making a Singapore Sling, a classic drink. So the story behind the Singapore drink, Singapore Sling, was... Back in the early 1900s, a Hainanese bartender named Ning Tong Boon created a drink because the British imperial colony, the ladies of the time, weren't actually allowed to drink. So it wasn't socially acceptable at the time. So what he did was created a drink that resembled a punch. And that punch was then, social, you could drink and sort of hide your alcohol. So that's sort of where it came. And it also was that the, uh, the British imperial officers could then buy the ladies of the time a drink. So... Nowadays, everyone can drink a Singapore Sling. It's great to see. And we're going to make that straight up. So what we're going to do is we're going to build this in our shaker, shake it, and then we're going to make it in our nice little uh, highball glass. So fill our cocktail, shake it with some ice. And yeah, we'll get started. Put our nice one in there. So yeah, this one, it's quite a large drink. So what we're going to start with is our cheapest ingredients. So what we're going to do is that four... This actually is 120 ml of pineapple juice. That's gonna get a nice frothy complexity. So pour that in there. Then what we're gonna add in is 15 ml of lime juice to get that nice bit of our citrus. And then we'll start adding our spirits. It's quite, they're quite boozy drinks today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in 30 ml of gin first. And I'm gonna be using our McHenry Summer Gin today because I think that orange blossom and saffron is gonna give that little bit of oomph that we want today. Also, it's one of my favorite drinks to use in cocktails. So, actually, what are we using? 30 ml. Uh, I'm, gonna use, I'm gonna keep this one for a, a lot of the drink. So, yeah, 30 ml. So today's drinks are quite boozy, so just make sure you drink responsibly. And yeah, always you can always halve these drinks as well because they are quite potent. So we've got our gin in there. Now we're gonna get into some of the more unique liqueurs that we are. We're gonna be using some triple sec, so we'll pour that in. Cointreau is in the original recipe, but I like to spice it up. So 7.5 ml, so just a little bit. Pour that in there. And then what we're gonna be doing is putting some cherry hearing liqueur. So what this is, is a cherry liqueur from Copenhagen up in Denmark. Oh, this is awesome. It's treacly, it's made from really dark cherries. Oh, I love it. So what we're gonna be doing in this is 15 ml, so half a shot. Lovely. Beautiful dark colour. Pour that in there. And then what we're also going to be putting in is a herbal liqueur. So another classic. So these are classic cocktail ingredients that were available at the time back in the early 1900s. So this is Don Benedictine. So this is a herbal liqueur. So what this is, is we're, yeah, basically herbals. You can smell the wormwood coming through. And what we're going to do here is also add in 7.5 ml. So not two big measures. Pour that in. And this is gonna add that spicy note that we want. Perfect. Now, an absolute classic, we're gonna add in a dash of Angostura bitters. Add a couple of dashes, because I like Angostura. And then our final ingredient is grenadine. So grenadine is a pomegranate syrup. I was gonna make it, but I ran out of time, so I just bought it. So basically pomegranate, some pomegranate molasses, you can put some orange blossom water in there too. And what this is, we're gonna be putting in 10 mil. So yeah, grenadine, I just bought it from the shops. And put that in there. 
So yeah, long drinks today, nice and tropical. Got lots of comments coming in. I'm gonna get to those comments just after I make this first drink. Now, always remember, put your shaker quite, so it doesn't explode everywhere. Let's have a bit of a shake. All right, as you can see, it did, did spray a little bit around. This color looks fantastic. So, what we're gonna do is get our Hawthorne strainer, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna strain this into our glass. Actually, no. We're gonna add ice to our glass first. So just throw some ice in there. Doesn't really matter. All right, now we're gonna pour our drink in. And you're gonna get that lovely foamy characteristic because pineapple's a natural foaming agent. Perfect. Lovely. And that is our first drink. The original garnish calls for a slice of pineapple and a maraschino cherry, but because we're at home and in isolation, I had some oranges on hand. So I'm just gonna use an orange. Put a nice little reusable straw in there. And that's our first drink of the day, a Singapore Sling. National drink of Singapore. If you go to the Raffles Long Bar, that's where it originated from. So back in the 1900s, early 1900s, created for the uh, English aristocrats. And yeah, classic Singapore drink. And we're gonna get have a bit of a taste now. That's bloody delicious. That is lovely. I can see how they can creep up on people though, because there's an awful lot of booze in there and it just tastes like punch. That is, that's impressive, I think. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm gonna get some comments. That's just a really lovely drink. Good, so we've got lots of people in today. Great to see. Good to see Tim. Yes, uh, my shirt's nice and loud, but why not? We've got our Oz Botanicals in. Good to see Caroline from the Gin Queen as well. Uh, happy hour, yeah, not, it is a little bit. Sunday happy hour, keep it nice and relaxed. Good to see Clinton. Uh, Aloha from Maui, yes. Hopefully we can go, get to Hawaii soon. Good to see Martinez from Colombia, hope you're all well. Good to see Sandra. Uh, she says, lovely memories of drinking slings at Raffles in Singapore. I actually know Sandra, that's my mum, and apparently she quite likes a Singapore sling and uh, had a few one day apparently. So I'm gonna tease her because she can, so I can see her commenting. Good to see Elise, hope you're all well. Elise is our amazing distillery legend and all rounder. So hope you're all well down in Tassie. Good to see celebrations, uh, good to see Dave, Oz Botanicals. Yeah, Oz Botanicals saying, love the sling, one of my top five. It's a classic little refreshing cocktail. It's. It's just awesome, I really like this. I've only had two sips and I'm, I, mean, I have had it before over in Singapore, but this is, it, it doesn't, it's, I think I've done it justice. Hope you're well, Josh, as well. And now we're gonna go into our, um, our second drink. Of, actually, we're gonna have a sip first. That's beautiful. Now, we've got a comment from Sharpie. Now I know what to do with the carton of pineapple juice in the cupboard. Yes, and our third drink is actually also using pineapple juice. So if you hang around for that, we've got another pineapple sort of, and. Pineapple juice is great. You can use it in a multitude of cocktails. If you check out our YouTube channel as well, we've got a few little pineapple drinks up there. You can do like Midori Splice. Sort of, not your high-end cocktails, but your fun, exciting cocktails. Um, let's get into our second cocktail. Now, the original, the way you should make this is you should shake it. However, though, you can build this in the glass. So we're making a Long Island iced tea. I've only got two shakers at home. So I'm gonna be making an isolation type. We're just using the equipment and the ingredients you've got. We're gonna make it in the glass. It doesn't make too much of a difference. So this one, we're gonna fill our glass up straight away. So yeah, you want a nice highball glass. In America, they use pint glasses, but they put in full shots. And we don't want to do that today because that's far too much alcohol for a Sunday afternoon. All right, so this, this is gonna be the booziest drink I'll ever make on this show. So what we're gonna start off with, actually, we're gonna start off with our lemon juice. So it calls for between 12 to 15, uh, 15 to 20 mil. I'm gonna put 20 in just so I can get a bit more of that citrus sort of zest, because that's what I really like. Put that straight in. And then we're gonna start with our spirits. So today we're gonna to be using our McHenry Pure Vodka. I've talked about this so much now, but it forms such a beautiful base for cocktails. So half shot, so we're doing 15 mil of everything. So your big five white spirits. All right, so let's, let's build this drink up. So yeah, 15 mil of our vodka, and that's gonna go in. I spilled that, so I'm gonna put a little bit more. Perfect. So that's our vodka. And then we're gonna be using a gin. I chose to use the Federation today because I really like those Australian botanicals, especially that lemon myrtle coming through. That's gonna add that super nice, zesty, refreshing taste 
Kakadu plum, the kwandong, the strawberry gum, even the mountain pepper leaf and that celery top pint is really gonna add to this drink. So I really like it. And in the spirit of like a, a long drink, it is a little bit higher in alcohol. So I sort of tossed up between using, do I use the navy strength or do I use this one? And I think this one will add a more rounded experience. Could see the truck farm co in as well. Go check out their website. So yeah, then we're gonna add our gin in. And then what we're gonna do next is add our triple sec in. So course a Quantro, triple sec, blood orange liqueur, really whatever you like. I like the Salerno. So once again, 15 mil. As you can see, this is starting to become quite a boozy drink. Now we're getting into our two other spirits. Of course, we'll a white rum. Most people have a bottle of Bacardi sitting around their house. That's a great little inexpensive way that you can sort of make this drink. So once again, yeah, 15 mil. Pour that in. And then we're gonna use our last little spirit of the day. Good to see Taylor and Smith distilling as well. Good to see you guys. We're gonna be using tequila. So tequila is, I like tequila personally, and this is just a great sound. Oh. So today we're gonna to be using just a Blanco tequila. So Blanco is an unaged tequila. So tequila is made from agave. Agave is a sort of, I've got some in my backyard. It's not a cactus, but it's in that sort of region. A tequila, what it is is, um. It's only, it can only be made in the region of tequila, as, and that's where mezcal, so mezcal is its older, smokier, bit more funky brother. But yeah, 100% agave tequila is what you should drink. In theory, if you drink 100% agave tequila, it doesn't give you a hangover. However though, ethanol comes into play. So always, yeah, just drink responsibly, but when you're making this drink, use a nice quality tequila, I think. So I'm just gonna be using the, the Patron today. I really like it. And I think once you sort of taste some nice tequilas, you understand it's not just for doing shots, you can really sip on it. So we're gonna add that in. Ah, oh, Taylor and Smith, thank you. It's a succulent. Yes, that's really cool. I was gonna sort of, uh, cause then you can get agave syrup too, which is a beautiful, um, sweet sort of alternative to using a sugar syrup. So I quite like agave syrup, but we're not gonna put it in here today. So what we're gonna do now, is we're just gonna give this a bit of a stir. So you can shake this up, but what we're gonna do is just make this in our glass just because we're, we've got our shakers for other, uh, other things today. Then, what we're gonna do, chuck a couple of ice cubes in there, and then a Long Island iced tea doesn't actually have iced tea in it. It has Coca-Cola. So what you wanna do is then float Coca-Cola on top. So this is a real big drink over in the States. Over in Italy, it's really big, so it's a, it's a party drink. But we thought to keep in our style of tiki drinks and summery sort of beachside drinks, yeah, we're gonna put our Coca-Cola in, so. You sort of layer that on top. And that's where it's called a Long Island iced tea because you're getting that iced tea color. It's originated Rosebud, um, so Robert Rosebud Bud, who's in a triple set competition. So he came up with this idea. The whole history behind it is very convoluted because a lot of people have claimed to steal the recipe. So I'm not even gonna get into that today because we could be here for a long, long time. But basically it's from New York. It's not actually from Long Island, New York, but the name, there's so much history behind it. We're just gonna drink drink. What we're gonna do, is just gonna put a little bit of lime in there. And I'm gonna have a bit of a drink. It's certainly boozy. Whew. Yeah. There's a kick to it. Taylor Smith says, looks very refreshing. It does. It is. I reckon the, um, the Singapore Sling's a little bit more refreshing just because I like that pineapple. I like the cures in there. But this one, you get that hit of tequila straight up. You get the gin coming through. I'm loving the gin in there. That Federation gin gives it that beautiful sort of roundness. Vodka is a base. And the rum just sort of builds on it. I can just be very careful when drinking these. So, mm, actually, I'm put a little uh, Best way to drink it, put a straw in there. You put some maraschino cherries in there, you put a little bit of lemon. I'm just gonna eat a little bit of lime today. Stir it up gets all those spirits interacting, you get that little bit of Coke in there. And it actually does sort of taste like iced tea. It's nice. It's it's a boozy drink, but it's something fun. And that's what we wanted to keep today. Live some people's spirits in isolation. I'm just loving this uh, Singapore sling. Look at that beautiful foam one there. Ah, lovely. Definitely go check out Taylor and Smith Distilling. They're one of our Tassie counterparts. They've got some great little pre-batch cocktails too. So stunning little labeling. And now we're gonna get into our third drink of today. So another pineapple drink. And this one comes from my good friend, Emma Cookson from Whiskey and Element. I asked her, what's your favorite kind of rum-based 
sort of Caribbean, Caribbean party drink, tropical drink. So we're gonna be making a jungle bird and that uses dark rum, some Campari, pineapple juice, lime juice, and what we sort of decided, we sort of modified the recipe. We're gonna put a little bit of damson gin in there and we haven't used damson gin before. So what the damson gin is, is a, it's very similar to the slow gin. But instead of using slow berries, which are a plum, we're using dams and plums, which you find around Tasmania. And this is the, it's a, a lovely, I, I love this. This is when I first ever went to Tasmania, when I first went to Tasmania, I actually bought a bottle of damson gin. And that was before I actually started working with McHenry. So it's always a personal favorite of mine. It's this beautiful, porty, almost takes on a Pedro Jimenez kind of characteristic. And it's a more richer version of the slow. A little bit sweeter too, because the dams and plums in nature are sweeter. So yeah, we're going to make a jungle bird. So we're going to another shake and drink. So we're going to get our cocktail shaker. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get our, our nice rocks glass. What we're going to do is put a nice chunk of ice in there. And then in our shaker, we're going to fill that with ice. And then we're going to put that in there. Now, what we're going to do is put our cheapest ingredients in there at first. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our lime juice. So 15 ml. This is going to get us that nice as I said, zesty characteristic. I love lime juice. Now what we're gonna do is add 40 mil, sorry, 45 mil of our pineapple juice. And we'll put that in there. Now we're into our spirits. Really interesting that we're using Campari in a tropical, a tropical drink. That's gonna give us that nice bitter base. So what we're gonna do is get our Campari. And what we're doing for this is we're gonna add 20 mil. There we go. And now what we're gonna be doing, something I haven't actually used before, and something we do have in the Bond store. We are making rum, but it isn't ready to go yet. So today we're just gonna be using a nice Gosling's black rum. And the beauty of rum, well, what rum is, it's a, a molasses cane spirit. Australia is and was one of the biggest producers of rum in the world. So we're really keen to see what a rum made in Port Arthur is gonna turn out to be because of the climate that we've got. So we do have that sitting there, but we weren't gonna bring it out of the barrel just yet, just cause it's not ready. So today we're just gonna be using a nice out of Gosling's. This is a really rich, deep run, uh, rum. You wanna use a dark rum. Earlier we used the Bacardi, and that's a beautiful light rum that's gonna give you that crispness. We want that nice body that's coming off the molasses and that barrel influence too. So this one calls for 40 mil. I personally love rum, I love agricole rums. We could talk about rum all day, it's a, it's a massive little topic. Put that in there. That smells absolutely incredible. So yeah, we get our rum. Then what we're gonna do is our damson. That's all we need. And this is gonna add, we're replacing this with sugar syrup. And then what we need for this is that 15 mil. Pour that in. I do love the damson. One of the longest maturation times we actually have takes a long time because we want to let it sit, macerate with our classic dry gin and get those beautiful, dark, deep, rich fruit flavors. This is great for mulled drinks. So mulled ciders, mulled wines, great in pudding. You could stew apples with it too. Good, uh, Katie's loving this. Um, Whiskey Travelers, good to see Joel, good to see Plum and Plum. I could see a run in today on a, a cold, dreary, but nice and tropical Melbourne day. So that's enough of me talking. Let's get, uh, let's get into this drink. So yeah, we've got our dark rum, we've got our Campari, we've got our pineapple juice, we've got our lime juice, and they're gonna be the star of the show is our dams and gin. All right, let's have a bit of a shake. Perfect. So this one, we're not gonna double strain it. I actually do want a little bit of those ice little flakes that we're gonna get in there, just cause it's a tropical drink. And now what we're gonna do is take that off and we're just gonna pour this in. The suggested garnish here is an agave frond, but I wasn't, I didn't really want to mangle the ones in my backyard. So I'm going to keep nice, I cut up an orange and because we're in isolation, we don't want to waste anything. So I'm going to use another slice of orange just because that's what I had in my house. Put that in there. Well, when you've got your uh, nice chunk of ice in there, it's sort of, so just be very careful. And that is our jungle bird. Really quite an interesting colour, and that's the Campari and the rum and the dams and gin all blending together. So yeah, let's have a bit of a taste. Oh, that's unreal. That's amazing. 
you've got, it's a really weird dynamic, but it's a great dynamic. You've got a nice dark rum mixing with that beautiful portiness of the damson gin. And then you've got that bitter kick of the Campari. If you're not the biggest fan of a bitter kick, maybe switch an Aperol, maybe put a bit more, um, a bit more damson in there. But this is a really, when I was talking to Emma, she's like, this is an underrated um, tropical drink. We didn't want to go out and we could have made like a Midori splice or something like that, but we wanted to sort of make something a little bit more, more serious. And that's why we chose to use the dark rum and the Campari, pair that with the damson. And I really like this. I think, yeah, really cool little concept. I think if I had to go for two drinks, I'd start in Long Island. I'd then go to the Singapore Sling for something a little bit more refreshing. And then this is like a sitting on a beach at night after dinner kind of drink. This is, yeah, it's nice and it's really cool. It's got that richness to it. And I actually really like the, um, the piece of orange in there. It gives it a nice little bit of refresh. Um, yeah, so that sort of wraps up our drink segment of the day. Feel free to ask any questions. I'm going to check out comments. And yeah, it's been a really fun little uh, episode today. Let's go through and have a bit of a taste. We're going to start with our Long Island just because it's probably the least favourite of mine. Mm. It's, um, it's interesting. It's super boozy. So you're going to get some weird notes coming through. Um, it's just so tequila heavy. And I like tequila, but it is a lot of booze in there. Um, Katie says that one looks delicious. Yeah, this one's really cool. I reckon definitely give it a shot. Um, whiskey Travelers, love it. Yeah, good to see you, mate. Hope you're well. Good to see Pete. Eagle Hawk Pavilions, good to see everyone. It's really quite an interesting drink. I reckon if you tailored it, a little bit. I reckon I'd refine it. I think I'd take back the tequila a little bit. I'd add a bit more gin, a bit more vodka, and I think that would round it out. I know you can make a Texas one too, where you add whiskey in there as well. But we'll save that for for a whiskey Wednesday, where we sort of experiment and push the boundaries of what whiskey is meant to be. I'm gonna go into the yard uh, of the Jungle Bird next. That one's unreal. There's just so much complexity. I love Aperol and I love Campari. It's almost got like a spritzy characteristic, but without having that sparkling wine or soda water. This one's really cool. I think this could be one I add to my sort of repertoire of cocktails. So, and a big thank you from, for Emma from Whiskey and Almond for suggesting this one to us. So yes, definitely a big thank you. And now I'm gonna get into probably the one that I personally like the most. That's Singapore Sling. That is delicious. The fact that I think, I know you meant to use a London Dry Gin, but I think our summer gin is such a versatile gin in cocktails. You've got such a beautiful body from the saffron. Just look, you look at the color and the orange blossom really works well with the triple sec and that cherry liqueur. It's just, I'm a big fan of our um, summer gin. So available on our website as well. And that sort of wraps us up for today. Hope you're all well. Ask any last questions. I'm going to go through, have one more sip because we are doing a tropical episode today. But thank you for joining us. Really cool to use four different of our products today. Normally we sort of stick to one, but we like to do our themed episodes every now and then. Join us again on Whiskey Wednesdays. Whiskey Wednesdays is going to be a really interesting one this week. Normally we have a lot of fun, play around, but and we still will do that, of course. But we're going to be looking at different kinds of port, sherry, and fortified wines, and how that affects the barrel aging process. Because a lot of what we do, at McHenry we use a lot of bourbon barrels, but we also use a lot of port barrels and how they sort of affect and how they sort of, what is port and how they affect the taste and the characteristic. So we'll look at some Fino, some Oloroso, my favorite Pedro Jimenez and some Amantillado. Uh, I will get, it's a lot of uh, Spanish words, but yeah, we'll be looking at Jerez and Portugal and I'm really keen for that. And of course our favorite segment, Whiskey and Coke, will be returning with a bit of a controversial one this week, even though they all are controversial. So we'll hopefully see you all then. Um, let's have a bit more of a drink. Long Island, get better the colder it gets. So I do think you should shake it up just so you get that nice cold base and then top it up with Coke. This Jungle Bird's a winner. That's the one I'm probably going to be sipping. These two are the ones I'll sip on this afternoon. And I think, yeah, the Singapore Sling, an absolute classic from the Long Bar. My mum's in the background already claiming the Singapore Sling, so I don't think I'm actually going to get to drink that this afternoon. But on behalf of myself, Samuel Licardi, and the team at McHenry Distillery, we hope you're all staying safe in isolation. We hope you're all well. Join us again on... Um, Wednesday for Whiskey Wednesdays, and then we'll be back on our Sunday. And on Sunday, with our next Sunday session, we'll be looking at the dams and gin. We'll be making some more wintry drinks, some mulled drinks, and exploring the history of what your slows and your um, mulled drinks are. So it's going to be a really cool week. Hope to see you all there. I'm going to take two drinks today. Give one to my mum. 
So yeah, stay safe and we'll see you next week. Cheers. Thanks, lovey. <laughs>